All right, what's up, everybody? This is Kirby. That's Alex. You know, this is Passive Money Plan. And today we're talking about a new deal that just came across the board. Uh, I know a little bit about the deal, but I don't know all the nuances. So we're going to share with you guys here today. Uh, so, Alex, you started a new deal. I believe you're under contract, correct? Yep. Um, so just talk about how this deal matriculated. I mean, let's start from the beginning. The beginning as... How did you find the deal, you know, and then let's just stop at what step in the process you're at now without going into too much detail. Um, I found the deal just by looking on the market on Zillow and I was just looking at multiple properties, speaking with multiple agents on those properties. And then uh, it's probably this is probably like the ninth one within a week that I found. OK, so did. Uh... So when you was talking to multiple agents, was you talking to you was talking to your realtor, tell them to talk to other realtors, or was you just going head on straight for the the uh, selling agent? No, I just directly with the seller agent. So why not just hire a realtor to do the dirty work for you? It seems to work more for the buyer using one agent, the seller agent giving that agent the full commission and they negotiate harder for that buyer. All right. So you want the seller's agent to get 6% because if you're dealing with the buyer's agent, they, they will split the commission. So in what ways do that benefit you as a buyer of real estate? From the deals that I've made in the past, telling the seller agent that I'm just working with them, knowing and understanding they're going to get the full commission they seem to work harder and put in my deals um i don't think that i could trust two agents splitting commission that my offer is going to get pushed through as hard so it seems to work from the past two deals um so i'm hoping you know with this one it's going to be the same result in that the seller agent understands they're going to get a bigger check and they'll work with me better on pushing through my offers and negotiating the deal with them. Okay, for the people that say, but this is real estate, you have to have a buyer's agent. What do you say to them about that? Well, if you use the seller's agent, they work with you as the buyer agent. So they're just doing two jobs. And then to the question of, well, if you're just working with the agent that the seller is having, how do you know that they're working in the best benefit of you? I don't think all of them do. I would answer it that way because I've spoken with like multiple seller agents that are not like, like eager to make the sale. It seems like they don't really care. Um, and you see it with like the duration of the time of the property listing too. It'll be on the market for months and half a year and stuff. So it's like, I, I think it just depends on the realtor. I've worked, I've spoken with selling agents that do seem to want to work with me and get the deal done and others that just don't really seem to care. And they're somehow, I've even heard of some asking for a buyer agent to represent all right, so for the new so for the new investor out there, when they say, okay, well, I think I need a buyer's agent, should do you recommend them having a buyer's agent or do you recommend them just using a the seller's agent when we don't know if the seller's agent is going to work in a fiduciary duty for the best thing for them? Yeah, because it seems like it's a conflict of interest. They work for the seller first, and then now they're working for you. How do you know that they're getting the job done on both sides? Correct? Or doing the best for both person, both parties? Right? Let's say in this case, the seller agent is understandable or understanding of the seller's position and what he's trying to get out of the property. And then she's also understanding of my position and the deal I'm trying to make. Um, So she's come to a way in agreement where she can work with both parties and try to navigate that deal. So first thing, did you, did you do a walkthrough of the deal? Did you uh, look at the deal? 
just via pictures? How did you go about that process? So she had sent me video footage of both units, uh, the outside the exterior of the property, and then multiple photos. But I did not do a physical walkthrough. Okay, so did you make an offer based on the photos and pictures? And then I'm I'm asking you questions that you know a new investor would ask. So is if the photos, I mean, if the photos and pictures in the walkthrough, uh, was you able to see everything in the house to be able to make a conscious decision on the offer that you presented? Yeah, so based off of the video footage, the video walkthrough, I guess you can call it, um, she pointed out a lot of just the majority of what needed to be uh, fixed in one of the units that's uh, that needs rehab. Um, and so, I mean, it's just like, it's paying attention to like different key points in that video footage. Um, you know, from like looking at other properties, I've noticed, you know, you can have mold on the ceiling. And so it's just like looking at different parts of the property, the flooring near the uh, wet areas and stuff like that, sinks, bathtubs. Um, but it gave me a good idea as to like, okay, seeing what I saw, I have a rough idea of what needs to be done and then a rough estimate on like how much that would cost. So what, so when you're looking at, when you're doing a walkthrough, you're looking at uh, videos or photos, what are the main key elements are you looking for when you're looking at those videos or still photos? So I would be looking for like mold, I guess, is like a deterrent for me. Um, I'd be looking for like damage on the flooring. Um, looking at like some of the smaller ticket items are like understandable. Like you're more than likely going to have to paint, repaint, you know, on a turnover. Uh, if there's holes in the walls, that's not like a huge deterrent to me because that's an easy fix. Um, but some of the bigger items I'm looking at, the condition of the cabinets too, can they just be repainted or do they need to be taken down and replaced? Um, the appliances, uh, and by that, I mean like the sinks, the condition of the sinks, the faucets, uh, some of the like stuff that needs to be taken out and replaced, can it be just uh, reconditioned or does it need to be completely replaced? So when we go to... So at what process are you in now with the contract? I know you were under contract. Are you at the due diligence period? Are you at yeah. the appraisal period? Where you at? So we're halfway in the due, uh, due diligence period. I asked for a two weeks due diligence. So we're tomorrow would be, would make that halfway mark at seven days. Um, and then getting the appraisal, the appraisal has been ordered. Okay. So with, if everything goes through, what what is your expected closing date? This how many days away? Not the actual date. Um, I'm expecting. So it's weird because the timing of the month at this pace, I think we could close two weeks from now, but that wouldn't necessarily be convenient for me because that would cause the next mortgage payment to be a month basically for now, a month and a week. So if we could close, uh, say three weeks from now, that would be more convenient, which is more so what they were estimating. Um, but somewhere around that time, I think would work better as far as uh, timing. Um, so why would that work better timing wise, just on a mortgage basis and things like that? It'll give me more time to... Um, to get work done in the property, make sure everything's in good standing, good condition before I get the next tenant in there. Okay, so have you had any hiccups as far as uh, dealing with the seller, um, dealing with the let's say interest rates? Is the you know is would the deal you know pencil would it meet your you know prerequisite for ROI and things of that nature? Uh, the only hiccup I've had so far it, with the seller is um, when the inspection report came through, which I got done 
uh, two days after we went under contract. Um, it came back with more detailed issues with the property than uh, expected. Uh, but the seller seems to be cooperative. Um, he's only held this property for a year. So he understands, you know, even at, you know, pretty much what I'm asking, he'll still make some money on the sale. So he, he isn't giving me any hardships. It's just what I expected was not what was uh, shown in the inspection. So it's just a matter of managing that, going through that. So when, when you go to managing that, of course, if it's not what you expected, it would probably be higher cost to you, correct? Correct. Yeah. And then so with higher cost to you, how do you uh, rectify that? Or are you just going to say, OK, I'll just it's going to cost more than I expected. Or what is your plans on dealing with that? You know, now financial impact that's going to be higher for the rehab than you expected. So. From initially from so let let's start from like when I initially saw the walkthrough. I had made an offer based off of that. He accepted and then getting an inspection and seeing stuff that was unforeseen, the estimate of that I've counter offered the initial agreement uh or price agreed upon. So countered offered and then asked for uh 1% seller concessions, which is like a credit that the seller can give you towards closing costs because in uh, investment properties, you can only get 2% seller concessions. With all that being said, uh, please like and subscribe. If you got any questions in the comment section, please comment below and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.